Sons of the Forest is undoubtedly one of the most advanced survival games on the market, but what exactly makes it stand out? Well today, I'll be showing you 50 plus stunning details that take it a step above the competition. Let's get into it. Baby sea turtles can be seen crawling away or towards the sea from broken eggshells laid by adult sea turtles along beaches. Adult sea turtles can be seen swimming to shore or out to sea, leaving a trail behind them in the sand. Clouds passing overhead will actually create shade when moving past the sun, really nailing home that feeling of immersion. Progressive damage is done with your axe with every hit you land on a tree, making tree chopping a much more satisfying task. The same can be said for the shovel as you plant it into the ground and bring up a mound of crumbling dirt before tossing it to the side. Hitting a Bunsen burner will cause it to blow up. Logs tossed into a flowing water source will float and even be taken downstream if the current is strong enough. Going into water with dirty or bloody tools will wash it off. All buildings can be completely free built using a variety of placement and chopping techniques without ever needing to use blueprints or a build menu. Season changes occur progressively over time. For example, leaves can be seen changing from green to yellow and orange as the season slowly shifts from summer to autumn. As the season changes to winter, water sources will freeze, allowing for them to be walked over. However, flowing sources will continue flowing. Cannibals can actually be seen slipping on ice during the winter months. Your character will periodically shiver when standing still in the cold. Fish can be seen swimming upstream and will even jump out of the water in an attempt to traverse waterfalls. However, it does not seem that they are catchable in this state. Eating foods such as dried meat or ramen noodles will deplete your thirst meter upon consumption. Drying meat or fish on a drying rack will preserve it, allowing it to be stored for longer before turning rotten, in comparison to regular, cooked, or raw meats. Seagulls can actually be seen eating starfish. Like, the entire thing. Building an active campfire in the underground bunkers will trigger sprinklers on the ceiling to activate, putting out the fire. The same is also true when using a Molotov. Upon quote-unquote dying, you will wake up as a hostage at a nearby cannibal camp, where you'll need to wriggle yourself loose and retrieve your backpack full of items before escaping. When accessing your inventory, realistic shade and other depictions of the environment around you can still be seen relative to where you are and what season it is. Entering caves does not present any kind of loading screen, as the game uses this animation of slipping through a tight space to mask it. Each craftable item in your inventory has its own unique crafting animation, which automatically speeds up if you craft the same item multiple times in a row. Companions such as Calvin can be seen taking sips of water to stay hydrated, warming up by the... fire? And even making use of furniture built by the player to rest up. Cannibals wearing armor will absorb more damage in the areas where the armor is present. Repeatedly hitting the same armored area will eventually cause it to break. Sleeping through the night will result in your hunger and thirst meters being more depleted upon waking up. Cannibals will actively try to destroy structures you've previously built, in an effort to thwart your progress. The bowstring can still be pulled back despite being out of arrows. I know, incredible detail. Unstable structures like stakes in the ground will be knocked over when walked into if there is no support added as reinforcement. Dead fish will float to the surface of the water when killed or dropped from your inventory. Female cannibals will mourn over the death of other tribe members, while male cannibals will check to see if they're alive, pick them up and throw them, or of course, eat them. When crouching with Kelvin by your side, he will also crouch in an effort to remain hidden alongside you. Cannibals will climb and even swing from tree to tree when observing or attacking you, giving them a distinct advantage. Cannibals will also feint attacks in an attempt to get you committed to a parry, opening up an opportunity to land a strike. Cannibals can be seen preying when undisturbed. Hanging skeletons make for probably the best replacement for a piñata that you'll find around the island. Virginia will visibly become dirtier during wet and stormy weather. Structures built by the player will become visibly displaced as damage is done to them. Fish will not be as aware of your presence if you stand still, however moving will spook them away. Cannibals and mutants can be seen fighting each other, as they are not from the same family. 
cannibals will become temporarily exhausted when fighting, if they've let a couple too many swings go loose. Seagulls can be hit additional times once already dead for more feathers. Feathers floating in the air will physically react when bumped into, sending them flying away. Spiders will occasionally crawl from out beneath rocks when picking them up, a feature that was also present in the first game. Hitting Kelvin with a small stone will sometimes knock him off balance. The map on the GPS tracker will actually move in accordance with the angle it's picked up at, when in your inventory. Different aerotypes will travel further and faster depending on the material they are made out of. A butterfly will sometimes land on your axe or other weapons being wielded. Cannibal camps that are completely wiped out will eventually become occupied by mutants instead. You can get trampled over by a moose. Winds will sway trees and vegetation. The amount they sway depends on the intensity of the wind. The GPS will lose its signal when inside of a cave. Kelvin can become your personal DJ. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. Virginia will actually dance the radio when near it. Cannibals can also be seen dancing to music at camps that contain radios. Kelvin and Virginia can be given different outfits to wear, found throughout the map. Virginia will go out hunting on her own and randomly return to you with a dead animal as a gift. At least, uh, she usually returns it. Throwing raw limbs into the water will cause nearby sharks to become attracted to it, and even breach the water upon consuming it. Your vision is slightly blurred when emerging out of a body of water. There is a miniature light bar attached to the inside of the rings on the survival books, so they can be more easily read in the dark. Players and other creatures within the world will leave tracks when walking through snow. Your character's stance with certain weapons such as the spear will automatically change depending on where you look. And lastly, Molotovs actually need to be lit before being thrown, otherwise you'll just be wasting a perfectly good bottle of vodka. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment letting us know any other details that may have caught your eye in Sons of the Forest. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.